Throughout this offseason, we've continued to hear so much about different players from our favorite team, the Baltimore Ravens, uh, through practices and training camp. We've heard reports and updates and this and that on how they've been doing, but Saturday was different. This past Saturday, we actually got to see them in a live game, in the first preseason game of the year. And it was fun. It was fun. Um, but there were some guys that had great games, and there were some that had not so great games. But is it over? Does that end it all? Does that finalize whatever their fate is going to be with the roster? Well, we're going to talk about two of those guys first, one being James Prochet and the other being Keaton Mitchell. With James Prochet, does he have still have a legitimate chance to make this Ravens roster? And with Keaton Mitchell, does he have a shot at pushing for some playing time uh, when it comes to Ravens running back situation? We're going to answer those questions and plenty more on this special episode of Questions from Subscribers. But first, a word from our sponsor. One of the most painful things to see on the football field every Sunday is a blindside hit. And that's because with blindside hits, you don't see them coming. They're painful. They're inconvenient And they hit you out of nowhere You ain't got no way to prepare for it And the same can unfortunately be said about a car accident But when football players get whacked They know exactly who to call When us regular people get into accidents Sometimes we just don't And then just a the simple thought of the process of hiring a lawyer It seems super stressful And it can bring a lot of anxiety But with Morgan & Morgan They make it easy What Morgan & Morgan have done Is modernize the injury law process So you can actually submit a claim And have it looked at by a lawyer Without even leaving the couch If you need to sign documents Send any pictures Share any medical records or doctor bills you can do all of that from your phone and for those of you like myself who don't feel like being on the phone all day you can even text message the case manager or the attorney without ever having to go into an office if you ever injured in an accident hiring an attorney is one of the first things that you should do and with morgan and morgan submitting the claim is super easy more than three million people have trusted morgan and morgan when they've been in an accident so if you're ever in an accident hopefully you won't be but if it does happen you can check out morgan and morgan you can submit a claim in eight clicks or less and you can have america's largest injury law firm fighting for you you can get started at ForThePeople.com or dial pound law, and that's pound 529 from your cell phone. So team, keep it clean. Welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs, where you can ask any question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you ever want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Shout out to y'all, by the way. Y'all can send it directly on Patreon. If you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you never miss anything because it's a lot. It's already a lot, and it's going to be that much more, especially once the regular season hits. But anyway, the regular season is not here yet, but a prelude to the regular season is the preseason, and we got our first game this past Saturday. Uh, and somebody that stood out in that game was James Prochet. And a lot of people felt like with the way that James Prochet, the game went – it is all but over for him when it comes to him being a Baltimore Raven. Um, does he still have a legitimate shot at making the roster? Initially, uh, during the game, I was thinking, yeah, that, that, that could be a wrap too. Um, he had the two passes come his way, uh, and they were both broken up. Then he had the, 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 his big play of the night, which was the fumble, the fumble on the punt return. And it was just, I just felt for him, man, because I'm like, oh, man, it just, it's been rough. It's been a rough year for James Prochet on the football field um, because it's like it just seems like everything that could go wrong it has gone wrong uh, for James Prochet and it's been unfortunate it's been really unfortunate so while I was watching the game I was thinking man that, that might be a wrap but then I thought man I actually do think he still actually has a chance at making the roster not, not even just the practice squad um, I definitely think he got a shot at making a practice squad but I think he actually still has a chance at making Ravens roster it would take a lot it would take a whole lot because he did have a catch after the after the two passes went his way and they were both broken up and after the fumble he did have one catch uh, but in order for him to make the roster he will have to have a phenomenal outstanding out of this world last two preseason games he would really have to um, but it also helps that the Ravens they really really like him as a person um, so that bodes well in his favor but he would have to just go out there and destroy everything in these last two preseason games. So a lot of that is not really in his control, but he can only control what he can control. So when the opportunity comes, he will have to make the most out of it and more. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, especially with the, the main person who he's battling with, in my opinion, for that last wide receiver spot, Tylen Wallace. Because Tylen Wallace, he had a good game. He even caught a touchdown and all. Really nice touchdown, too. 
So right now, I would have to give Tylen Wallace the leg up on, on his competition being James Prochet and really everybody else right now as well who's battling for that final roster spot uh, at wide receiver. But it ain't over till it's over. And somebody whose career is just starting and it's definitely not over is Keaton Mitchell. Keaton Mitchell, I had heard so many different things from Ravens fans when the Ravens first brought on Keaton Mitchell. And so many of them said the same exact thing. There is no way that he, that he has to make the roster. Ravens can't let him go. He is going to make the roster. He got the, the, the breakaway speed. He can be a return man. He can do it all. And I was like, okay, I like what I hear. But then when we saw the preseason game, I was like, oh, I love it. I love it. And I want him to make the roster. But how will he? Can he? Can he actually push for playing time on the Baltimore Ravens roster? I think he can. But it will take a lot. One, uh, the, one of the biggest ways I think he can push for playing time is in a return game. Uh, right now, Devin DuVernay is their returner, and he is an all-pro returner. He is. Um, so it would be really hard for Keaton Mitchell to carve out a role there, but I think he could, especially given the opportunity. Because Devin DuVernay, hey, st straight line speed, that's him all day. But he's not wiggly like that. And Keaton Mitchell, he is. And I could definitely foresee him breaking some big uh, returns uh, on special teams. Um, another way that he could push for playing time um, – if he could beat out Melvin Gordon. Uh, because J.K. obviously lock. Gus Edwards lock. Justice Hill lock. Uh, but Melvin Gordon and Keaton Mitchell, it'll come down to those last two. And with the Ravens, uh, with their offense, because they, they uh, I would expect them to be passing the ball more, so they may want to keep three running backs instead of four. But Keaton Mitchell, so far, it's still early, still got two preseason games left, but so far, uh, he's given them every reason to keep him around because uh, for somebody like him though again it's just been one preseason game uh, but it's been some nice practices too but somebody like him it's like you, you almost feel like you cannot let them go uh so we'll see what happens but as far as those two james proche and keaton mitchell i feel like their trajectories of both of them with the baltimore ravens are heading in two different directions right now but let's see if they can both get on the same track now those two first questions came from me but now let's get some questions from you all first question came from my guy uh Ejon. he said greetings and graven team keep it clean all the way from southern cow my question for you is between keaton mitchell melvin gordon and surprise Devin duvernay Who's the odd man out? Who's going to the practice squad? Oh, good question to start us off. So um, out of those three, Devin DuVernay, I, I think he stays. Um, odd man out, I would say Melvin Gordon. Uh, if I had to choose one for practice squad, um, it would be Melvin Gordon uh, or Keaton Mitchell, maybe both. I think Ravens would possibly run the risk of um, I don't want them to, but the way that they've operated and – Especially, they, they got some tough decisions to make, man. J.K. ain't going nowhere. Uh, Gus ain't going nowhere. Justice Hill ain't going nowhere. So um, if they end up keeping four, then Keaton Mitchell got a shot. But if they only end up keep, keeping three, then I think they could put him on a practice squad. Uh, he said, Keaton Mitchell, rookie phenom. Won't last long there if he continues to showcase his talents at a very affordable rate. Yes, man. Yeah, you, you summed it up perfectly. Melvin Gordon, a veteran running back with decent production, the known commodity with receiving capability in this new pass-friendly offense. <laughs> Good point again. Uh, Devin DuVernay, with real wide receivers added in the offseason, very little buzz so far. The Justice Hill can return punts, and Keaton Mitchell was just seen returning kicks. So to me, he's a surprise candidate that could possibly not make the team this time around. Ooh, that... No, I, you know what? I thought about that before. Devin DuVernay, there's, there's no way that they would just outright cut him, though. I, I think the only way that Devin DuVernay is not on the Baltimore Ravens is if he gets traded. But as far as cut, no, nah, I don't see it at all. He said, also, I highly doubt Baltimore carries five running backs on an active roster. Oh, no, not at all. Next question came from my boy Kevin. He said, wrong about Ben Cleveland. Watch this YouTube video breakdown on how Ben Cleveland played against the Eagles after that first bad play against Jalen Carter. On that Carter play, I think the center and him should have double teamed Carter. But that's my opinion. But Cleveland had a dominant game the rest of the way. Watch the video, please. And yeah, I did hear about Ben Cleveland and his dominant game. Me, I wasn't really focusing on the offensive line throughout the game. I wasn't focusing like individually on the, the different offensive linemen and whatnot. Uh, but I did hear really good things about Ben Cleveland. And that has been the consistence, the, excuse me, the consensus uh, around Ravens that he did have a, a pretty good game. Besides that first play, 
Well, that, that Jalen Carter play where he got blown up, but other than that, he was spot on. Next question came from my guy Paul. He said, hey, Engraven, hope all is well for you, and I'm looking forward to your coverage of the upcoming Ra season of Ravens football. Hey, I appreciate that. We're looking forward to it, too. Uh, he said, I really enjoyed the game against the Eagles, and while it's crazy that we've won 24 preseason games in a row, we all know the point of these games is to evaluate the depth at various positions and give guys the opportunity to compete. One position that I'm sure many Ravens fans are concerned about is cornerback, as there are very few established players after Marlon Humphrey, and there have already been several injuries to guys like Rocky seen Demarion Williams, Trayvon Mullen, etc. This opens up opportunities, though, for other guys to step up and show what they can do in the preseason. One player that really stood out to me was Kevon Seymour, who had a lot of playing time and had really nice coverage on Eagles wide receiver Tyree Cleveland. Oh, that's his name, Tyree? Because, yeah, I kept seeing Cleveland. That's number 85, right? Because he kept catching catch after catch after catch after catch. Anyway, he had good coverage on him early on in the first quarter. Seymour had been around the Ravens for a while, and while he didn't look very good uh, in 2021, when literally everyone ahead of him got hurt, uh, he has impressed me in camp so far, and he can play special teams. So, given the uncertainty at the cornerback position, this year could be his big opportunity. With that said, do you expect him to make the roster? And if so, uh, what could we expect from him this season? Anyway, nice to finally be back. Good luck this season. Appreciate that. So, um, Kevon Seymour, I think that he'll make the roster simply because he's made it already several times. There were, there were several transactions with uh, Kevon Seymour last year, I believe. Um, and Ravens brought him back again, so I, I could definitely see them keeping him around, especially because he has experience out there, like really out there, not just, not a little bit, but he got a lot of experience last year with the Ravens. So they know him, he knows them, he knows their coaching staff, his coaching staff knows him, so I think he'll make the team. Next question came from my guy, BB. He said, what's up, team? Keep it clean. I gotta say, we being Ravens fans gotta look more at appreciating Devin DuVernay. This two-time Pro Bowler has glue on his hands every game. If this current system was implemented a few years ago, he would be considered a possible number two guy on this wide receiver roster. He has been the most solid wide receiver on this roster since his rookie year, being in a system that doesn't favor wide receivers as threatening targets. Duve is so undervalued, we need to give him his his flowers and he said hashtag team keep it clean and super bowl bound hey we're gonna see we're gonna see I, I that super bowl bound i could definitely see that though but um with Devin duvernay I, I think that with him it's just about opportunity it's about using him the right way i feel like he wasn't used the right way over the past couple of years and hopefully this year now uh Monken will use him to his strengths and also from bb he said with the struggling of the offensive line do you think ravens will start daniel file he did very well protecting last season with this injury-stricken O-line. He's 6'9", 389, and he is a luxury for the team. Your thoughts? Ooh, starting Daniel Falele. Um, or they start him at guard? I mean, because they're not going to start him at tackle. Um, they could experiment. I, I would like to see them put him in at guard with the starters on the offensive line, like in preseason or something, but... If they don't do it, they're not. They're not going to start him. Next question came from Luffy. He said, what's up, Engraven? It's been a while. A while ago, I basically said we didn't need a job, but he has came a long way from his injury. I never wanted to down a man trying to fulfill his dream, so it was self-centered by me to say what I said. So I take it back, and I hope that he has a great career wherever he is, and I apologize for any disrespect. Anybody associated with the Ravens, if they felt some type of way about my comments, genuinely, peace. Hey, I appreciate this. That, that, that's, that takes a real person right there to... um to correct something that they feel was wrong about what they said and if it offended anybody too. I, I appreciate that a lot. And with David Ajabo, yeah, man, we're going to see with David Ajabo. Um, so far, so good uh, as far as training camp and stuff. Preseason, he was a little quiet, but who knows what the coaches told him. Maybe the coaches told him, hey, David Ajabo, just go out there, run a little bit, engage a little bit, but don't, don't, don't go too crazy. No, don't, don't, don't show him what we've been working on. Just keep that on the low. But, yeah, man, we do hope David Ajabo does really well. Um, him, the Dafi, just all, all of them really, man. So I, I appreciate you doing this. <laughs> Speaking of Devin Duvenay, this next question came from my guy, Michael. You said, what's good? My name is Michael, huge fan of the channel. Uh, I appreciate you watching it, Michael. So you said, so I don't know if I'm overreacting, but I've seen a post about Zay Flowers becoming the Jet Sweep King now. Uh, what does this mean for Devin Duvenay? Now, I, I, I think Duvenay will be straight, especially because he got the return game. I do think Zay Flowers will be more involved with the offense than Devin Duvenay will. Um... Simply because Zay Flowers is more of the future right now than Devin Duvernay is. Du Duvernay is on, ain't he on the last year of his deal, I want to say? I think he is. But either way, uh, Devin D Zay Flowers is a first-round pick. Devin Duvernay was, what, a third-round pick a couple years ago? Um, and with Zay Flowers, like, when somebody's a first-round pick, especially a wide receiver, that's what all eyes are going to be on. Not to say that eyes are going to be off for Devin Duvernay, but more eyes are going to be on Zay Flowers for the Ravens than it is on De Devin Duvernay. But it's important that 
regardless of where they were drafted, regardless of what year they got picked up, regardless of what the future holds, it's important that the Ravens use both of them the right way now. Long season. Next question came from my guy Jordan. He said, first off, God bless you on your page. It just has so much positive energy, so thanks for that. No, Jordan, thank, thank you for that. He said, if the wide receiver room does well in the preseason, not just the top three or four, but the ones behind them, what are your thoughts on the Ravens putting Bateman on IR to start the season, which makes room for one of the bubble receivers on the roster and saves Bateman for when the season starts ramping up and he could be fully healthy? No, I, I, I wouldn't do that. If, if Bateman's ready now, like when the season starts, play him now. Play him now because the more the merrier. I get what you're saying. is You're playing, you're playing more the long game. But I'm playing the whole game, man, the, the the whole season game. It is a long season, like was the title of your question, and I, I get where you're coming from. But if Bateman's ready, I say put him out there now, man. Let's go Ravens and O's. Next question came from my boy Kevin B. He said, hello, Engraven. Hope all is well. I'm going to make this short. We cannot let Clowney leave without a contract. We've been begging for him for some years, and hopefully JK gets everything resolved because he will be a big part of the offense and look at that everything was resolved by the time uh we got to this question he said uh he has to get out there and ball out jk 23 games in three seasons that doesn't look good on your resume my friend peace and blessings well jk ended up coming to peace with the ravens and blessing us with his presence and now he's back next question came from reese he said first off thanks for everything you do and how are you all doing hey we, we good we're pretty good man i appreciate that hope you're doing good too he said my question is and i may have missed something but bayman was working out with obj and hopkins before training camp did he get re-injured or put on pup list I, I think maybe he got in trouble and that's his discipline maybe i'm wrong that's what i'm seeing uh i i don't think so i because that that wouldn't be wise of the Ravens to put him on PUP list to discipline him. Um, so, no, I, I don't think that's what it is. I think maybe he got uh, the injury that he had. I think they said he wasn't responding, like his body wasn't responding. Because, look, when you're working out, excuse me, when you're doing your, your private workouts, you don't have the, the team medical staff around you. You just would have your private workouts with your boys. But with him being back with the Ravens medical staff, they can take that much closer take they, they can take a they can take that much more of a closer look at him and seeing how his body is, seeing how his body responds to stuff, seeing how his body's feeling and whatnot, how the treatments are going and whatnot. They can take a much more extensive look at him uh, than he would got if he was on the outside. Next question came from my guy David, who's a team keep it clean patron. Appreciate you. He said, Dan Graven, I got another question for you regarding the wide receiver room. So my locks this year, Bateman, Odell, Flowers, and Aguilar. In a situation like this, do you see the Ravens keeping five or six receivers? And is there any word that Proche beats out Duve for a spot? No. I don't think Proche beats out Duve at all. I think Duve is pretty much a lock. I think he's the only like lock that could be a possible not lock. But um, I think Duvenay pretty much is there. Um, but Proche is not a lock by any means at all. I say I don't think this is likely, but I'm curious to as to see how Proche has maintained a spot on the roster up to this point, given his lack of production over the last few years. Oh, well, that's a good question. I mean, that ties into the uh, the first question that we had uh, about James Proche. That's what I said. The Ravens really like him. Um, I think they would just really like there was the potential that they may have seen with James Proche, but it just things just haven't worked out yet. Um, but hopefully, whether it's with the Ravens or whether it ends up being somewhere else, hopefully it does end up working out for James Prochet. Uh, but as far as Devin Duvernay, Devin Duvernay is a lot more safe than Prochet is. Next question came from my guy Martin, who's been a patron for two years. He said, so I know I got on the Ravens media for the hype videos, candidates, but let me reverse that a little and say I do like their podcast with the players and them, and them asking random questions to them. It's always fun getting to know this guy, and it makes you root for them even more. I love our players and how they are really uh, like a family. Uh, did did you see Nick Bosa holding out over there in San Fran? He's been one of my favorite players and never thought of the possibility of trading for him. <laughs> hey, EDC should at least give a call over there to see if they can make something happen. LOL. Wishful thinking. I know I'm definitely not ungrateful for the masterful offseason EDC has done for the team. This will be my all-in year. Get everyone. Let's make that Super Bowl happen. Love you guys, team. Keep it clean. You guys are awesome. That would be nice. That'd be great. But, yeah, you, I like it. San Fran ain't paying. I, you, mm, yeah, I, I just Ravens. Nah, they, they, they not going to. But anyway, continue. He said, "I'm all for players getting their money. I think J.K. will have earned his money, but 
think he's uh, his situation is trickier than the other holdout running backs for multiple reasons. Josh Jacobs and Saquon Barkley are coming off career years. JT had Jonathan Taylor had an MVP like season two years ago, and all three of these running backs are essentially to their team's success. Not saying JK isn't, but one thing you have been saying for the longest is that the Ravens have a one A one B situation, whereas the other running backs holding out don't have that problem if JK sits out, which I don't think he will. Uh, then it's Gus' time to shine. I don't want this to come off as JK doesn't deserve to get paid. I'm just saying he has a lot working against him. Oh no 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 no. We we got you. We 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 all understand it. And that's what we've been saying too. Is he's he he doesn't have any leverage right now. Uh, like I always talk about, no problem with players trying to get their money. Go get all the bread that you could possibly get from the league because they got plenty of it to give around. They be want to hold it back sometimes, but hey, you go out and get it. But with J.K. Dobbins' situation, it, it, it was really, really, really tricky for him. So he's back now. So he's off to a good start. Let's hope he has a great season and he can cash in afterwards. And the last question on this special episode of Questions from Subs came from a patron, Dominic. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope everything is good and well. Hey, I appreciate you, Dominic. I appreciate you being a patron. He said, I seen Pat Ricard just came off the PUP list and noticed that Harbaugh has said that Ricard was taking snaps at O-line as well. To me... This tells me that his position as a fullback will either be limited or taken away eventually. I think the Ravens like Ricard as a player. That's why they are trying to move him around. But as an old lineman, I can't see him doing that. What Would he be a guard or something? What are your thoughts on this? And yeah, I could see that too. Um, cause like I told y'all, somebody told me a long time ago, like when they start moving your positions and stuff, they start trying you at different places, then that means you just really don't have a place. Uh, but we'll see with Pat Ricard because like you mentioned, they really like him. They love Pat Ricard. Um, so I'm, I'm sure they'll find something for him At least this year Next year I think that's when It becomes a real possibility That he wouldn't be with the Ravens no more uh, Especially since And Munkin came out and said it from jump Like he don't be using fullbacks like that So that's, that's that was significant So we'll watch to see how they use him I mean they, they tried him to uh, they, they had him today well, What's today the 14th or 15th Today the 15th They had him today the 15th uh, at practice, a Joint practice with the commanders they had him working that tight end a little bit too. Just moving around up different places. So he's been doing a little bit of everything. Maybe he'll be like the uh, the skill position version of a uh, Patrick McCarry, where he play all these different positions or what. Because I mean, last year we saw him at fullback, running back, tight end, and wide receiver too. So maybe this this year they're just running back, but with more intent. <laughs>